Halo Infinite in many ways is a return to form for the Halo franchise, but there also are many new mechanics involved with this game as well. So whether you're an old fan been playing forever or a person just getting back into the franchise or someone who's first time playing Halo, this is a ultimate beginner's guide of how to play Halo Infinite. So if you want to get better at the game, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going Halo fans? Kevin here on the channel here, the channel that keeps you up to date with everything going on with Halo. And today we're going to be doing a beginner's guide of Halo Infinite's multiplayer. In this video, we're going to cover multiple topics of the abilities you have in the game, the damage types, how to pick up weapons, where those weapons spawn, talk all about the academy, which is a huge learning curve right there, learning the maps and also settings in general. So if you guys like these tips and trick kind of videos, make sure you tap subscribe to the channel to keep yourself updated with everything going on with Halo. So let's get right into the content here. The first thing we need to talk about are your abilities in this game. Abilities in Halo have been something that's been changing a lot over the last 10 years, but Halo Infinite has set itself up to be the Halo game for the next 10 years. So these are gonna be your core gameplay abilities that you have on your Spartan. You have Sprint, Slide, and clamber. Sprinting does provide a bit of a speed boost, but roughly like a 9% speed boost, nothing too crazy where you can still walk around the map just fine. But sprinting is really mainly used for your ability to get from A to B when you know there really isn't much going on. I utilize sprint a lot in big team battle, but not so much in arena, but due to the map styles. Sliding is an ability that carried over from Halo 5, and it's a really great ability to just kind of sneak around a corner to get on somebody, get a surprise maneuver. But one thing you really can do is what I like to call the super slide, where if you jump onto a downward slope while crouching for that slide. So when you make contact to that downward slope, it will launch you forward. So you can get to locations even faster. I would definitely suggest going into custom games or training mode to test out different ramps and where you can slide down them. Clamber also returns from Halo 5. This is an ability to let you get to those ledges a little bit higher. Clamber doesn't completely replace crouch jumping, which is a very important maneuver to learn in Halo. Some ledges are designed to be clambered to, but there are locations which you can actually just do a simple crouch jump onto to avoid doing that animation. So I suggest clamber when you need to, but crouch jump when you can. Next are damage types. Damage works very different in Halo compared to really any other popular shooter out there. We have kinetic, plasma and electric damage which is new to halo kinetic damage is mainly stuff from the unsc human weapons which would do a great deal of damage on health where plasma damage does a great job against shielding and electric damage like dynamo grenades and the shock rifle have the ability to stun vehicles and also deal damage over time and has the ability to chain two nearby enemies as well with electric damage. So a general rule of thumb, a great way to utilize these different damage types is plasma, use that to rip off the shields, switch to your kinetic weapon to take off that final kill to take off the health. If you come across enemies in a large mass or group, use some electric damage to chain some shielding damage down for them as well. While we're on the topic of weapons, we'll talk about the, how the weapons are gonna be spawning in Halo Infinite, which is different to any Halo previously. We have weapon racks now for various weapons in Halo Infinite. In traditional Halo, weapons would be located on the ground and you pick them up in very specific locations. Now you still kind of maintain that same kind of idea, but this time they're on racks. These racks also give you information on when the weapon will spawn up with the bar right above the weapon rack as well. Once that bar reaches full capacity, then the weapon spawns back up in that same location. The same kind of rule applies to equipment pads as well, where if you pick up some equipment, you'll see a bar counting down when the next time that equipment will spawn up. So while you're in the middle of a match, keep an eye on those timers. You might catch yourself off guard. You'd be like, oh, a battle rifle is just about to spawn up. Let me wait two seconds and I'll pick that up. This also plays into the next section we're gonna talk about, learning the maps in Halo Infinite. Learning maps in Halo Infinite is way different than like learning maps in Call of Duty or Battlefield or anything like that, where it's more just kind of learning about different angles and advantageous locations, which are still very true within Halo, but you also gotta take into consideration where weapon spawns, where equipment spawns, where power-up spawns, and specific types of jumps that you can make in the map as well. And depending on the game mode that you're playing, what the weapon racks spawn in can be different as well. 
Understanding power weapon spawns and weapon spawns in Halo Infinite is absolutely crucial for you to do better in the game. Learning specific jumps on maps are very crucial as well. It can help you take some shortcuts and get some advantageous moments on the enemy team. So it's very important to jump into like a custom game or into the academy, which we'll talk here next. Look around the map and see if you can get to specific locations. For example, I found this jump on recharge where it takes me from bottom mid right to platform instantly without having to worry about going up the stairs. Jumps like this are scattered throughout all the maps of Halo. Of course, knowing how to play is half the battle, but the ability to play is also the other half. And one way to get down to your gameplay abilities better is by changing up your settings within the game. Halo Infinite will run you a default controller layout, which I will highly suggest against. Obviously, if you're very familiar with that style and you wanna play with it, you can. Settings can be very personal, which is very true down to what people like, but there are general trends people do within Halo who are experienced players to more effectively play the game. For example, a lot of people play Bumper Jumper, including myself. I actually changed my sensitivity down to 2.5 and my controller acceleration up to 5, with my 5 time zoom being 1.4 sensitivity. Aiming in Halo Infinite feels very different compared to any other Halo game. With the lower aim assist and lower bullet magnetism, getting your sensitivity just right in Halo Infinite is actually gonna make a huge difference. I do plan to make a specific dedicated video when it comes to coming up with your specific settings that you like to play around with and what Halo Infinite has to offer, but essentially take some time, play around with your settings and feel what works best for you. And lastly, what's the best way to go about practicing all the things that we just mentioned in this video? Jumping into the Academy. The Academy is a location within Halo Infinite that's specifically designed to provide tutorials and information about how to play Halo Infinite. It's a great place for you to test out weapons, test out equipment and movement on top of that. There is training mode, which actually lets you spawn into a multiplayer map of your choosing with bots in there. So you can test out your aim sensitivities in training mode. You can test out your button layouts. You can test out literally anything you want to test out with. You want to practice your aim against strafing bots, put them up the Spartan difficulty, put on deathless and play fighting and just Practice your aim, practice your movement in the game as well. Practice your strafing, going left and right, playing against bots will really help you learn how that familiar Halo dance really plays out. And 343 is only looking to expand the Academy as well. So this is gonna be a spot where it's gonna be a great place for players to learn new mechanics, old players who haven't played in a while to come back and get back in the swing of things, or new players who have never played Halo to really understand how Halo actually plays. So if you guys are new to the channel or missing any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. I got a link to all my Halo Infinite news and informational videos we've been uploading daily about. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.